I've always loved volunteering. I had a passion that in my 60s when I retired, I would do it full time. But God had another plan for me. Bill and I got married in 1992. And I came into our marriage with some consumer debt and my student loans. We then followed the path of keeping up with our friends who made a lot more money than we did and we didn't talk about money. In 1995, we realized we were $50,000 in debt uh, with nothing to show for it. At that point, we decided we were going to work it through, pay off the debt, because we were too broke to live on our own and we weren't going back to our parents. So we went through some marriage counseling. We did the modified debt snowball because we didn't know the Dave Ramsey class at that time. And in five years paid off everything that we owed as far as the credit card debt. At the end of that time, we were able to buy our house in 1999 and we were committed not to going back into debt. We then found out that Bill's job would be eliminated, and we were originally told it would be a three-month process, but it ended up being 18 months. So in that time frame, we were able to stockpile money, live on my salary, and came to the point we were able to pay off our house and got to the point where we were totally debt-free. When we ran the numbers, um, you know, with after we paid off the house and we, we kind of looked at things, Lisa and I discussed together, and. We came up with a plan that I wouldn't have to go back to work if I didn't want to and I could do volunteer work, which I had always had a heart to do. I get to do what I love now. I get to help out at the church and do inventory there. I get to help out at two separate soup kitchens in Narstown and uh, I am the president of Project Outreach right here in the Greater Spring Ford area. Uh, it's just been such a blessing. And then we were approached to do the Financial Peace University class. What I love about doing the class is that we can uh, not only help people not get into debt, which is what the uh, ultimate goal is, but the primary goal is to show people that uh, are in debt that here's a couple that were in debt and almost got divorced because of it and we managed to make our way through and to come out on the other side and be able to do what we can do now, which is just uh, truly a blessing from God. Isn't that a great story? So they're gonna be uh, leading our Financial Peace University class that starts in January. If you have not uh, been a part of that, uh, we would highly encourage you to sign up. Today we're going to be finishing our series called The Elephant in the Room. We've been talking about winning with money, and today we're going to talk about paying ourselves for the future, investing in ourselves and in our children and their children's children uh, so that we can change the trajectory financially for our families. Now, we began the series the very first week talking about debt and we ask people to make the commitment that I commit to attack and pay off all my consumer debt. And so hopefully you were here, uh, that you took that challenge. If you were not here, please go watch it online. You can find it on the website, and you can find why people were so excited when we were leaving. I heard so many stories about people who left and said, that's it, I'm changing this. Enough with living this, kind of, this way, I am not doing this anymore. Now we got the idea of debt elimination from Proverbs 22.7 that says the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is slave to the lender. And the elephant in the room that we talked about was there are a whole bunch of Christians who act like they're wealthy but yet have very, very little in their lives for when expenses come up. Now, the, net, the, the following week, which was last week, we asked everybody to say uh, to themselves and before God that I commit to tithe 10% of my income to God through CCV. We looked at a lot of scriptures that talked about tithing and how we're not talking about the cultic, the cultic um, law of tithing that was found in the Old Testament temple. We're talking about the principle of tithing that existed before the Old Testament law and after the Old Testament law. 
Proverbs 3, 9 through 10 says, Honor the Lord with your wealth, the first fruit of your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. And last week, we issued a challenge uh, where for 90 days, we call it the 90-day tithing challenge. You'd be willing to try this for 90 days. You get all your money back at the end of 90 days. If you don't think God kept his word, 107 new households here at CCV stepped out and said, you know what, I'm going to do that. And they joined the hundreds of people who are already tithing here at this church. Now, if you were here last week and you were uh, struggling with this whole tithing thing, I just want to say I get that. That's something that every serious, committed follower of Jesus has struggled through at one point or another. In fact, if you heard grumbling in the seats next to you last week, um, that's the grumbling of people who haven't fully surrendered their lives yet. And don't judge those people. Just know, hey, uh, we were all one of them at some point. You're sitting there with arms crossed. I hate this. Why did we come on this particular day? Just understand we've all been there. And what we're wanting for everybody in this room is freedom, financial freedom. Um, and that's why this last thing that we're going to talk about today that I'm going to ask everybody to make a commitment to is I commit to discipline myself, keyword discipline, discipline myself to proactively save the wealth God has given me. We get this idea from Proverbs 13, 11, where it says dishonest money dwindles away, but whoever gathers money little by little makes it grow. And this word um, dishonest comes from a Hebrew word, hasty, quick. And the, the Proverbs writer is basically saying that when you make, try to make quick money or get out of a situation quickly without building the character to sustain you for a lifetime, what happens is that usually you're cutting corners to make that happen. And so God's solution ultimately then for financial freedom is that whoever gathers money little by little makes it grow. So let me ask you this question. Are you saving money? And is it enough? The issue of plotting little by little, 25 here, 100 here, 500 here, 1,000 here, 500 here, 200 here, 2,000 here, over and over and over during a lifetime is what creates financial freedom for when situations arise. Now, everybody has a, a person in their family that they look up to. For us, it's my wife's aunt. She is a role model for our family. She is a devout Christian, and she has avoided debt her entire life. She's never been in debt one time. Even when her husband died of leukemia, when my wife's cousin was just a toddler, she never remarried. She always tithed on what she made. She always worked. When the government sent small Social Security checks to live on as a death benefit after her, after her husband passed, instead of using that to live on, she saved that for her son. I remember talking to her. She would go all the time, walk down to the bank, put it in CDs. This is when you would actually make some money on CDs, you know, for a year or eight months or 18 months or, or two years. Uh, here's the thing. She's never had a car payment, but yet she's always driven nice cars. And that's because instead of making a car payment, she pays herself a car payment every single month into a savings account. She's always done this. And when she's saved enough money, she buys a reliable car and drives that car for 10 years and then sells that car, takes the equity that's still left in that car because she cares for the car, pays it on the new one, takes the money out of that 10-year savings account and pays cash. And so she drives new cars, well-kept cars, and she gets a new car every single 10 years. Now here's the thing, she's not insanely rich by any stretch, but she lives in a beautiful, small little quaint home in Granville, Ohio, just a mile from the entrance of Denison University. She walks to work every day and is in great shape. And even though she's in her mid-80s, she still works part-time, even after suffering a few strokes. She's actively involved in her church, and she cares for who she calls the old people uh, in the church. She has this amazing social life. She is just someone to look up to as a way of how to conduct your life and how to handle your money. Now, here's the thing. All of this was made possible because of A, her commitment to Christ and his church, and B, her commitment to doing money God's way. She avoided debt, she tithed her whole life, and then she has given not only a tithe, but she loves missions, has always supported missionaries. And that way of life that she's cultivated has created wealth, financial wealth, but also financial freedom 
And that's what God wants for every person in this room. She is exactly the kind of person Proverbs 13, 7 describes. One person pretends to be rich, yet has nothing. Another pretends to be poor, yet has great wealth. The elephant in the room is that there are many people that you would look over side to side in the, ro the rows that you're sitting with, and you would think that they actually have a lot of money because of their lifestyle. But the reality is if you were to liquidate all of their assets and pay all of, all of their debts, there would be very little money, if any, left over. That is the elephant in the room for people in this area. They live like they're rich, but they are actually very, very poor. And the problem is, is that when situations arise that actually need savings to take care of it, it's not there. Now here's the point. Please hear this. The point is not to become a wealthy person. The point is to be a financially free person. But to be financially free, you must save for the future. And so this is the commitment that we're getting from Scripture that all of us, we're asking all of us to make this here today. I commit to discipline myself to proactively save the wealth God has given me. Now, are you going to be willing to do that? Don't raise your hand, but are you going to leave here today and say, I'm going to do that. I am sick of not having saved the resources for the future, so now I'm simply living in the reality of my lack of planning and my lack of discipline two, five, 15, and 20 years ago. Are you willing to change it? Because what I want you to do is I don't want you to leave here to, to, and be all like all discouraged and stuff. I want you to get angry and get weird like we talked about. I want you to say, I'm going to be weird. I'm not going to be like all of my other friends who are broke and have nothing, but they live like they do. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it. So here's what I want to do. I want you to grab your pen and your sermon notes, and I want you to draw a diagram, okay? Because I'm a visual learner. Uh, if I'm trying to think of something, I have to get a diagram. And Bill Hybels one time, senior pastor of Willow Creek Community Church, Sarah shared this diagram that just made perfect sense to me, and I wanted to share it. So I'm stealing it from Bill, but I want to share it with you. So here's what I want you to do. Got your pen and a paper? Uh, lean over to the person next to you and say, if you don't have your pen out, I'm going to stab you in the leg with my pen. Okay, so this is, we're going we're gonna to do that, right? So here we go. Just be, do this corny thing that Brian is asking you to do and draw the picture. Okay, all right. So he asks us to do these things occasionally. Just, just humor him and draw it. So here we go. What I want you to do on the top of your paper, um, I want you to draw a line all the way across the top of the paper, okay? And then I want you to put the words, God's provision level, all right? What this represents, when we say we're gonna do money God's way, it all begins and it all ends with everything coming from God. It's all his. We simply manage it. And so this line represents that for every single person in this room, God is providing money for you. And that provision has a level. It's whatever your household income is right now, this is your provision level. Now, when we begin with this idea that it all comes from God, we acknowledge that when we were born, he gave us life. He gave us talents and abilities, he gave us educational opportunities, and later on, vocational and employment opportunities. And our earnings are simply a manifestation of the goodness and the providence of God. Now. That line that you see right here is your income level, and this is what God has provided for you to live on during this season of your life. And everyone has a provision level, and they're all different. And there are a number of keys to winning with money, but underneath, down at the bottom, the first thing that I want you to write down is, in order to win with money and do money God's way, you must accept God's provision level. You have to be able to look at what you are making currently right now and say, I accept that. It's not what I want, but I accept that and I'm gonna live with that. In fact, I'm gonna live under that. I'm not gonna live beyond God's provision level. That is what he's provided, I'm gonna live. So can you change your provision level? Of course you can. You can change jobs, you can improve your education and skills. Um, you can get a second, you can do all kinds of things. But eventually, even when you do all of that and you're in your dream job and your life is set up, eventually 
you're gonna come back to a provision level, and you're gonna have a decision to make. Am I gonna accept that and live under that, or am I gonna try to add to that? Now, a lot of people will say, God, it's really hard for me to accept this provision level, particularly when I look around at other people And they seem to have a whole lot higher provision levels than me. And this is where God says, this is the the idea of contentment that you need to learn. The Apostle Paul talked about this. He said, I know what it's like to be in need, to have a low provision level. I know what it's like to have plenty, a really high provision level. But I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. Whether it's a low provision level or high provision level, I'm going to be content and I'm going to accept that that provision level for this season of my life, I'm gonna accept that that's enough. I'm gonna make this work for my life. Now, that's the first secret of winning with money. The second secret to winning with money is don't add to God's provision level by going into debt. Now, in your drawing, at the top of this line, I want you to add this line above it, about 10% above that, and I, this line that here's this provision level, add another line on top of that and put this phrase, God got it wrong, so I'm going into debt. <laughs> All right, God, you got your wires crossed here because I deserve a higher provision level because all of these other people have all of these other things, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to help you out a little bit. I'm going to ratchet up my provision level, but the only way I'm going to be able to do that is through debt. And God comes along and he says, you know, that's a really bad idea. Because this debt, if you ratchet it up, eventually you're going to have to reduce this line even further eventually to pay off this debt. He said, that's a really, really bad idea. So God says, I want you to live underneath the provision level. But the other thing that I want you to do is I want you to draw a line underneath this, okay? And that the, but it represents this third idea of joyfully returning to God 10% of what he provides us. That's, the, that's this third key, right? And what happens is this is a little bit of a priority test for people. And this test comes every single time we get paid. We have a decision to make. We look at all of our bills. We look at the provision level that just came in, and we make a decision. Am I able to pay these bills with this provision level? And so what God says, there's some faith that's involved in this. So the the line that I want you to put underneath this is the part I joyfully return to God. This is what's called a tithe. I live underneath the provision level, and I live off of 90% here. And that's where the faith comes in. Now, Bill Hybel says that the person who tithes and the person who doesn't tithe in this room, they look at each other, and they secretly think that the other guy is an idiot. The guy in this room who lives on 100% is inwardly laughing right now because he's thinking, you really think God is gonna give that back? You need that money. How are you gonna do better financially if you're gonna live on 90% and just give away this 10%? That doesn't make any sense at all. But the guy who tithes thinks, who puts this in and lives 10% below the provision level, You're never going to have a story to tell of God's favor in your life. You're never going to lay your head on the pillow at night and know that you're doing money management God's way. You're the person who says, well, I can't afford to tithe, but you're actually going to end up having less money in retirement than the person who tithed. You say, I can't tithe, but you're going to end up paying more for college than the guy who tithed. And so the big question, Heibel says, is what kind of idiot do you want to be? Because we're both going to be an idiot. The question is, which one are you going to be? Now, there's one more step in this equation, and it's this other step of saving 10% of God's provision for the future. Hybels calls it a 10-10-80 plan. The first 10% goes to God, the next 10% goes to our future expenses in the form of savings, and the remaining 80% goes to what we live on. Dave Ramsey will say it's 15% for savings, not 10%. So back to the provision level, okay? What I want you to do is there's God's provision level, and I want you to add this third line. Go ahead. And the third line is the part that I pay myself for the future, which leaves us 80% that we're living on currently and that we're managing. If you are in your 20s, please listen to this. 
There are a multitude of people in the congregation that will tell you they wish they had done this when they were 22, but they didn't. And so that extra debt that's going right here, they're reducing this even more to pay off that debt. And so the thing is, when you look at this picture, not only is it being content living on this, but it's being content living on the 80%. The question is, could you do this right now? And what step would you take? Dave Ramsey said, as we talked about the very first week, is that you immediately save $1,000, and you put it in your emergency fund, and then you take everything, and you attack your debt, and you pay it off in like two to three years, and then you're turning around, and you're throwing 15% into savings for the future. Three to six months is three to six months in a short-term savings plan for emergency funds, and then the rest then goes into retirement. College education, all of that. Are you doing this? Where are you stand? This is a great diagram of God's plan. Now, God looks at us and he says, listen, I know that you need a model. And the model is not that broke certified financial planner that says he's a Christian and isn't tithing and isn't saving himself. The model is the ant. The ant. The Bible says, go to the ant, you sluggard, and consider its ways and be wise. It doesn't have a massive brain. And as Dave Ramsey says, Winning with money is like a very small percentage of it is information. The rest of it is changing behavior. And he says the ant, it has no commander and no overseer, but what does the ant do? Verse 8, it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. What does that mean? Why is the ant going and gathering food and storing it up? Why? We all know because winter is coming. And winter is going to be a season where you're not going to be able to go out and gather food, therefore you need the food stored up. And God says, that is what a great person looks like that's following my plan, that gets it. They know winter is coming. What is winter? I'll tell you what winter is, like I talked about last week. Winter is your carburetor breaking and having to come up with $3,410. But they threw in a battery, so at least I won that way. A winner is a roof leaking. Winner is your water heater breaking. Winter is college expenses. Winter is wanting to buy a house. Winter is wanting to retire. Winter is medical bills. We are all going to face winter, and God says, I have provided the funds for you if you will simply be content living underneath my provision and then adequately discipline yourself in savings. Now, um, I'm simply going to ask, put it up again, and I'm going to ask you this question. Are you willing to make this commitment? I commit to discipline myself to proactively save the wealth that God has given me. Are you willing to do that? You would be foolish not to make this commitment. This week we asked some CCVers to share what happened when they chose to follow God's plans for their finances. And because of time, I won't have time to read all of them. There were some fantastic stories. But I wanted to briefly share one couple's story. They began it by saying this. We came to CCV about 15 years ago, and we were baptized and started to follow God's word in varying degrees. And I love what he says here. Even though the Bible might say it, we never even considered giving one-tenth of our income, let alone the first tenth. I think that's funny. We were what we had left kind of givers. And at that point in our lives, we had nothing left ever. What did they do? They lived on 100% of their provision level. Even though, he goes on, we had two incomes and we had $95,000 in unsecured debt and decided to, decided to give tithing a chance. They were living on 100% of the provision level and then adding on top of that probably another 10 to 15% a year in debt. In that situation, and I love this story, they said, we're going to tithe. We looked at it like a financial diet. We were amazed at what God provided and what God took away. God has and continues to take distractions out of life. Things just started to change in many ways, but it was our hearts related to money that changed the most. We are now debt-free, 
and have saved one year's of expenses for an emergency fund. It has also allowed us to focus in other ways to become more obedient to God. Brian spoke of a man a few years ago who when asked why he tithes and gives offerings, he said he shovels it out and God shovels it back in and God always has a bigger shovel. We have experienced that in our life time and time again through this journey of tithing. And so we're gonna ask everyone this morning to make that commitment. Um, if the ushers can come down the aisles, there, if you were here last week um, and you already did this, great, then you can just simply wash. I need the, tie, the, car, the ushers to come down the aisles. Come on, Frank, bring it on. Can you hear me, Frank? Just wanna make sure you can hear me, all right? All right? Barely. I love you, I always mess with you, all the geezers here in the church. Um, he has a joke and he busts me every single week. Love Frank. All right, so the 90-day tithing challenge is this. Our um, finance team believes so much in what scripture teaches, that God will respond when you step out in faith and he will bless you. That they have created a scenario where there's no risk, meaning you step out and you tithe for 90 days. At the end of 90 days, if you feel that God has not um, honored his commitment to you, that he hasn't blessed you, then you privately uh, make a, a request to receive all your money back for the 90 days. There's no risk. Now, this is not for those of you who are brand new, and this is not for those of you who aren't Christians. And so you get a free pass. You don't listen to the rest of the thing I'm saying, and you just watch. But let me tell you, this is a really good opportunity for you to watch how our church funds stuff. We don't do a bunch of fundraisers, run out selling stuff, and, and we, we just ask people to give. So what I'm gonna ask is for every person here to fill out a tithing challenge card. And you have one of two responses. The first is, I would like to test God's faithfulness by accepting a 90-day tithing challenge. I agree that starting next Sunday, my household will give to God through CCV a tithe equal to 10% of my income. At the end of the 90-day 90 90 period, if I'm not convinced of God's faithfulness to bless my life as a result of the obedience to his word, then I am entitled to request a refund of the full amount of contributions made during this 90-day period. So if you're here today and you are, have not tithed yet and you want to take the tithing challenge, you're going to check that first box. The rest, if you're here and you don't need to take that challenge, you say, I already give to God through CC, 10% of my income, or you're like, you know what, I'm gonna start giving, but I don't need the tithing challenge, you would check that second box. Now, the finance team has asked that I read the fine print. Fine print is uh, you have to fill out the card. The money that you give during the 90-day tithing challenge is all that you can request a refund. You can't say, I want everything back from 2005 because I'm going on a cruise, right? Um, I understand that it must be documented when you give. You have to do it online or do it on an envelope. And I understand that you have to make the refund within 30 days at the end of the tithing challenge. So uh, what we're going to do right now is we're just going to take a moment and we're all going to fill out the cards, check a box, fill out the information, and uh, I'll give you a second to do that. If I jump off the stage, I will die. I will break a leg. You have to carry me out when the emergency. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, if you can take the card and fold it, and then on the way out, if you can drop it in the bowls, what they'll do is they'll take them, collect them. I don't see them. They will take them to our finance team. They'll give them to Kevin, our executive pastor. He's going to send you an email this week. He was gone this week for those of you who did this last week, but he's going to send you an email this week thanking you, officially saying, okay, well, it started. And you would communicate with him if you have any questions about how to give or, or refund, whatever, whatever you do, okay? So that's how it's gonna go. Let's pray. 
Our God, we're so thankful for your provision in our lives, even when we are having a hard time being content with it. Um, we pray for everyone here in this room that has taken this challenge. We pray, God, that you would bless them in response to obedience to your words. Uh, we pray, God, that uh, you would provide for them in very interesting and powerful and miraculous and strange in cool ways. We pray, God, that this would be a first step for many people into winning with money and doing it your way and honoring you in the process and making a huge difference around the world as a result. And so we pray for your powerful blessing and favor this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.